Okay, so now we will go to the types of breakers. No? So first we have this breaker or the definition of a circuit breaker. So a circuit breaker is a protective device used to automatically blow or cut the current with a trouble as in the circuit such as short or overload of course. Okay, so we have the pseudo-dual current circuit breaker or RCCV. RCCB, so that the meaning for RCCB is residual current circuit breaker. So it is a device intended for the protection of personnel that functions to energize a circuit or a portion thereof within an established period of time when a current to a ground exceeds the values established as a class A device or that is, you say a class A device, the ground to fault current is more, uh, more than 600 milliamperes, no? So, the RCCB works as like a ground fault circuit interruptor. The only difference is a GFCI could come as an outlet, a circuit breaker, or a um, corded, no? corded switch or a corded outlet. But a residual current circuit breaker only comes as a circuit breaker. So, hence the name residual current circuit breaker. So, but the purpose of a residual current circuit breaker is the same with a GFCI even if the GFCI is an outlet, a circuit breaker, or a, a corded outlet. Okay? You have the molded case circuit breaker. So this is a type of circuit breaker commonly used in industrial application like plants and board, uh, board yards. So the breaker can be thermal, thermal magnetic, or electro electrodically tripped. So the unique feature of this uh, type of breaker is that it protects both short circuit and overload. Then you have the miniature circuit breaker, the MCB. So this series of circuit breakers are used in lighting distribution system or motor distribution system for protection from overload and short circuit in the system. So it has a high braking capacity, can trip quickly, and is highly resistant to fire and shock. The product is neoteric in, stru in structure, light in weight, Re re reliable and has excellent performance. And we have the surge protect pro protector circuit breaker, also known as a TVSS or transient voltage surge uh, suppressor. So it is used to limit the transition, the transient over voltage and amplitude to absorb, dissipate, and discharge the surge current energy. Because if you do not put a surge suppressor or a transient voltage surge suppressor or a, a surge protector, or a, or a transient voltage surge arrestor. So the electronic device of our of the home or in the commercial building could uh, be destroyed by such over under voltage disruption on our system. So it could uh, the such surge could be caused by if if the part of a building is uh, hit by a lightning or a certain surge on the supply no? the supply side or the you on the supply side of the building so to protect our electronic de electronic devices as well as to prevent fire we need to install a transient voltage or suppressor or a surge protector circuit breaker so this is an example or a or a appearance of a rccb this is a molded case circuit breaker and we have here the miniature circuit breaker and we have the uh, transient voltage surge suppressor also known as a TVSS okay now we will go to the types of lamps so we have electric lamps are devices that transform electrical energy into visible radiant energy or light so some sources of electric wires are simply wires that are heated no? some lamps are wires that are heated by a flow of current until they become hot or enough to be luminous no? other sources of light could be elect electrical discharges from gases or the use of um, semiconductors or also known as the lead no? and phosphors okay so types of lamp so according to philippine electrical code there are two types of lamps. So we have the incandescent and the electric discharge lamp. So the incandescent, so that is a lamp which is used, uh, which has a filament. No? The filament itself is a conductor. 
sometimes tungsten, no? the most common is tungsten, and that glows white hot. No? Lamps that produce light without a filament are classified as electric discharge lamp. Example of electric discharge lamp are fluorescent and HID lamps. Okay. Now we have the types of lamps. You have the incandescent. An incandescent lamp has a filament made of tungsten. When the tungsten becomes white hot or incandescent, it gives off a light and heat. So it is the very first type of lamp that uh, that is um, invented. No, invented. Uh, um, if if we speak of the invention, if we if we consider who patented this um, incandescent lamp, so we could say that it is Thomas Alva Edison. But there are some um, instances or there are some uh, contradictions that uh, Thomas Alba Edison is not the one who invented the first incandescent lamp. But that is for uh, the, the topic of history. No? So we're just here for the, te the technicalities of the types of lamp. Okay, so these are the parts of an incandescent lamp. We have the outline of the glass bulb, this one. Then the low pressure inert gases, tungsten filament. This one is the tungsten filament, contact wire, so which goes into the stream, the contact wire, which is out, this one, support wires, the stem, contact wire, cap. So the cap is this one here, that is the cap, the insulation vitrate, so this one, the black one here, and the electrical contact. Okay. So, we have also the fluorescent lamp. So, fluorescent lightning was first developed in the 1930s. So, it, its principle is simple enough. So, but it took two years for research to become highly developed tube found in modern lighting. No? So, the, the fluorescent lamp is an electronic device. So, it consists of a resistor, or an inductor, and a capacitor. No? So, these are the types of Fluorescent lamp according to wattage. So we have the, have the wattage here and the length of the lamp. No? Okay, so now we will go to next slide here. So the type of circular lamp or circular fluorescent lamp, either corresponding a description. No? Then you have the parts of the fluorescent lamp. You have the glass tube. No, so this is the, this is where the gases, no, which will be um, heated up by the electrical current, um, is uh, stored, which will create light. The bases. So these are the bases. We have the cathodes. No, so the hot and cold cathodes here. Then we have the mercury droplets. Okay. So, mercury droplets are placed into the tube, so they vaporize during the operation of the lamp and emit or give off ultraviolet energy. So, to have well, the filling glass, a small amount of highly purified argon is placed in the tube. So, this gas ionizes, no? producing of electrical conductive in gases when sufficient voltage is applied. So, this allows the current to flow readily through the tube. Now, the phosphor coating, also a light energy produced by the mercury is ultraviolet and it is invisible to the naked eye. So the phosphor, the, phos the phosphor coating reacts to the ultraviolet rays and turns the energy into visible light. That's why we have the fluorescent light as white light. No? Then we have the starter. So a capacitor, the capacitor in the starter controls the amount of arcing between the contacts when they open and close. So this, it protects the uh, fluorescent lamp from sudden changes of voltage. In the ballast, so controls or regulate the amount of current flowing through the lamp, thereby protecting the lamp from burning out, especially the cathodes itself. Then you have the lamp holder, which is uh, where our um, tube is held in place. No? So we have the different types of fluorescent lamps starting. So we have the preheat and the uh, manual. No? So the preheat itself also known as the manual starting. So it has a it has a cathode and um, it takes some uh, minute to start the uh, light. No? Then we have this is the diagram of the light, no? the, the diagram of the 
fluorescent lamp or a preheat fluorescent lamp. We have the rapid start fluorescent lamp, so it has an electronic ballast and it has no starter, so it has only an electronic ballast and will not flicker. No, it will start automatically. So this is the uh, conventional diagram of a rapid start no fluorescent lamp. Then we have the CFL. The CFL means compact fluorescent lamp. Okay, so it has also an electronic ballast and it comes in different sizes. So the CFL components are a gas filled tube and the electronic ballast. So this is the electronic ballast. Then the lifespan of a CFL is 8 to 15 times that of an incandescent. So it is um, 16 to 15 hours, no? Hours, no? While in the incandescent lamp, that is 750 hours to 1000 hours. Then have the high intensity discharge lamp. Okay, so high intensity discharge lamp is a lamp or a type of electrical lamp which produces lighting by means of an electric arc between tungsten electrodes housed inside a translucent or a transparent fused quartz or fused alumina arc tube. Then the HID, the types of HID we have the metal halide lamps. So the metal halide lighting system are growing in popularity and it is becoming a customer's choice of uh, satisfaction. No? So it um, it is a combination of metal halide, no, such as the high energy efficiency, white and high current during light and long life. We have the high pressure sodium lamp or the HPS. So this type of lamp is much more energy uh, efficient compared to mercury vapor lamps, but its light color and which orange was dramatically different from the common mercury blue. No, so this is a, a photo or a a picture of a um, high pressure sodium lamp showing its parts. Now, then the mer mercury vapor lamps. So, mercury vapor lamps were first developed in the 1930s in both Europe and the USA. So, they represent a new type of lamp that was more efficient and lasted longer than incandescent lamp. They were ideal for street lighting and factory lighting. So, this is a photo showing also the parts of a uh, mercury vapor lamp. Then we have the low pressure sodium lamp or the LPS are more closely related to fluorescent and high intensity discharge lamps since they have low pressure, low intensity discharge source and a linear lamp shape. So this is a photo of a uh, LPS and an LPS lamp used on street light. Then the luminar. So a luminar is a complete lighting unit consisting of a lamp or lamps together with the parts designed to distribute the lamp to position and protect the lamps and ballast where applicable and to connect the lamps to the power supply. So they come in different sizes and shapes. So the luminar includes the reflector, lamp sockets, enclosing materials, ballast, inflorescent lamp, each of the units, and stems and canopies were used. Since the light from bare lamp is given of pro approximately equal in all direction to use the light economically, some accessories is required to direct the light to a desired area. So this is an example of a luminar. Then we have the last type of lamp which is now the uh, most no, common no, lamp is the lead lamp. So lead means light emitting diode. No? So a product which is assembled into lamp or light bulb for use of lighting fixtures. The advantage of a lead lamp has it has a, a um, longer lifespan and, and, and a much better electrical efficiency compared to incandescent lamp and significantly more efficient than fluorescent lamps with some chips are able to emit more than 300 lumens per watt. No? This is an example of a um, lead lamp. So we have the luminance, you know, talking about lamps and its brightness. So the luminance or the lumen is the unit for luminous flux, you know, a measure of the total quantity of visible light emitted by a source. Luminous flux is weighted according to the model of the human eye sensitivity to various wavelengths. So this, are the, this diagram shows how much lumens do you need. You know? So the brightness, so 220 plus, 400 plus, 700 plus, 100 plus and 1,300 plus. So these are the low means that you need. So these are the 
types of lamp that you have. So for example, you need 700 lumens. So if you know, if you want to be energy efficient, so you just use the 10 watt bulb LED lamp. Okay. Then comparing lamps, so this is the lumens per watt of some lamps also, and the typical application here, you know, for incandescent, so home system, general lighting, emergency, emergency lighting, then the life hours, no? So these are the life hours. Okay, next we have the types of color emission, no? So we have here the the temperature which is in Kelvin, no? So we have daylight, the cold white, the mid warm white, and extreme white. So these are the temperature and the color emission. So the effects on colors, so strongly enhanced blue, flat is red, bluish tint on white. So this is very important if you are going to have a landscaping lighting, you know? so in which your light will also add to the beauty of the room or of the building. So the typical applications, we have your typical applications for this type of color temperature. No? Okay, so I believe that will be um, everything on our discussion. So I hope you learned something with this video and as always, enjoy learning.